Thank you for doing that, Bill. You betcha. I put the Bibles out, too. I don't. Yeah. He didn't use them last time, but I figured it's, it's just good to have. see if there's anything there, unless you want well, to go I yourself. I had something. Oh, okay. I ate a pear quickly. You ate a pear? I had a half a bagel. I had the other half in the car. And one of my hummus costumes. Oh, yeah. You didn't get any, did you? Not, oh, I ate them here. Yeah, but, oh, here, you did, you did. Oh, yeah, they were delicious. Sure, 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 sure. They were absolutely delicious. I wanted to show you, mm -hmm. maybe, I, I don't know how I can do this. I think when you made triangles, I think you made your made it difficult for yourself. I think I did because you the, you, you make a circle. You explained that to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to see what they have in there. I'm going to get some coffee too. And don't be lonely. Something. I'm going to find something for her. Good. We're always the first ones here. Last week, hmm? last week I had two men. You brought me and... Oh, good. Hi, David. It's Dottie. Morning, David. Good morning. Oh, no sound. Uh, can't hear you. No sound. No sound. Well, I got sound here. Good morning. We can't read lips. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you again. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Nice Thank to see you. you. Oh, I want to join you, David. It's a chilly day. It is. Yeah. Oh, that's very really yeah. cold. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Diane. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. It's been a while. You <laughs> I'm doing better. I'm doing better. Yeah. 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 Testing, testing, testing. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I have moon face from steroids. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, Daisy. Yeah, you know, I decided to come even though I shouldn't. Yeah. All right, we won't hop. Yeah. yeah. Well, just thanks. We got a card from you. Oh, you got it? Oh, yeah, it's too fast. I just yeah. thought I could do a good one. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. I wish I was here, but I was in, I in, know. in your action. Oh, my and gosh. I'm so happy <laughs> Paul's doing here. well. Paul's doing really well, and, and uh, he's just a miserable human being. Right? Testing, <laughs> testing. I know, I know. I know. And was, oh, we oh, drove to the shore and drove off the bridge. Like, let's oh, end it now. Well, I felt. Well, my, my feelings in my heart was with you more than with him. Yeah, right. I know it's what you are suffering. Yeah, I know. I know. Somehow, men or All something. Right. My it's gosh. Like the Wait world ends. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Jamal, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, you know, things are but, but yeah, very, yeah. And we see the surgeon yeah. again. Uh, 
Yeah. I think the seventh, and we see the oncologist again. Good morning, Diane. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. That's good. Yeah, it's so fantastic. Yeah, yeah look at the It's amazing. It is amazing. It is. Yeah. I have one at home. Yeah. My God, I'm just big. Is this got commentary? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. I don't think so. It's the Arabic text. Oh, wow. I wonder if she'll take it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes. People are dying. Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. Exactly. I don't have time this morning because I have to eat breakfast. I have to take my first morning pills and then I have to eat and take my second morning pills. I have to take my second morning pills. Yesterday. I haven't been able to do it without going to the insects. Oh, I've never been able to solve one without going to find it. Stage one, I heard stage one. They, they got it. They can do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. That really means it's all contained. Oh, yeah. 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 So they chopped yeah. off half the pipe. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 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 And then there was a word to know that. Carol, you can tell me. Thank you. It's really in a bad way. Pardon? Oh. 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 I can hear you. I can hear everybody. Hi, David. Somebody had to the depressed audio and the other screen. And this happened. So, anyway, I'm very sorry. I'm meeting a day. Elizabeth is down in Arlington with grandbabies, but she'll be back next week. Okay. Hey, David. How are you? Good morning. Fine. Good morning. Sally. Hi, Karen. Good morning, Jim. I don't need any of that. Yes, you do. That's what I do, too. So good. What do you mean? Another piece of paper. Oh, Stephen. Welcome. It is so good to see you. Hi. There, you, you guys can have. Why don't you, you take yeah, some yeah, over for Steve? Oh, uh, you. Uh, you have a seat. I'm just. Oh, yeah. 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 You ready for a quiz? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not going to take And here's your napkin. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. Thank have you met my husband? No. This is Janice. This is my husband, Janelle. Very nice to meet you. I'm Janice. I met your um, wife the other day. Oh, yeah. We're here Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it's ridiculous, I know. So I was just talking to you today. Nelson! Hi, Nelson! Good to see you. Hi, Paul. Did you bring Nelson? Good to see you, Nelson. Welcome. A Sunday, but you were gone. Sorry. We, uh, let's see, what was the deal? We had to be somewhere. Oh, no, no, no. We had a meeting here right after the church. There was a meeting in this room, so I had to go. But I did see you there, yeah. Sorry. Oh, nice to see you here. It's good to see you. And you know Paul. Yeah, okay. It's amazing how that happens. And you know that guy, too, I agree. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read the end. Yeah, I'm going to read the end. I'm not going to get to this. Yeah. 
That's talking about a class out of control. Let's see if the index. I must have talked and they heard me. So now what do I do? You can mute yourself. <laughs> I can mute myself. Where? We're glad to hear from you, Diane. <laughs> Good to hear from you. Oh, yeah. thank you, everybody. <laughs> it looks like a group of people out of control to me. <laughs> Hi, David. Good morning. I don't know how to turn me off, but I'll learn in a minute. Robin? Help. Take care of yeah. it. Sounds like a chapter here, chapter seven. She's controlling the group one. you all are here and David we are delighted to see you once more so would you like to start us off I certainly would good morning everyone good morning David whoa that's a big good morning all right why don't we begin with prayer the Lord be with you and also with you good and gracious God we give you thanks for this gathering again this morning for this time to gather, to learn, to appreciate your witness through Jesus and how he is viewed by people all around the world. We ask you to open our hearts and minds. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, it's good to see you all again this morning. And um, what I would like to do is just take a few minutes to review last week before we move to this week. And hopefully you should have handouts in front of you that say March 27, Jesus the Wandering Prophet. Is that what you have? Yes. 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 Excellent. Very good. Um, and you should also have a Bible. Mm -hmm. And I will be asking for volunteers later in the class on the 
on the back of this sheet, if you flip it over, you'll see there are five different passages, um, three from the Gospel of Matthew and two from the Gospel of Luke. If, uh, if you're so inclined, if you might want to pick one of those uh, so we can move through that later in the class. But first, I want to go back to last week where we introduced Jesus, or Aisa, as he's known in the Quran, and the passages, the major passages that refer to him and his life. And I gave you some homework at the end of the class. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> and the homework at the end of the class, does anybody remember what their homework assignment was? The triune God. The Trinity. Yes. How, how to explain the Trinity. How did you do? Not good at all. Well, wait a minute. I did some research on social media and I found out it's a hoax. Oh. And in fact, I learned from very authoritative sources that some of the early disciples, the real zealots, tried to overturn the resurrection. Oh. But that was fake news. Okay, I'll fake news. The Book of Concord, however, the only help that uh, source would provide is that they call it the greatest mystery of God, mm -hmm. which wasn't real concrete. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, well, my, my uh, nefarious plan was not to actually have you solve the mystery of the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> which you succeeded it valiantly in. Um, but to help you continue to think about this as Christians who um, live with um, both friends, neighbors, family members who are not Christian, and especially those who are Jewish or Muslim. Because remember I said that both the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, and the Quran are very clear in their perspective about polytheism. That polytheism is considered idolatry. And the Hebrew prophets in the Old Testament and the Quran is very clear that polytheism is a bad thing. And in the case of the Quran, there is worry that Christians are engaged in polytheism. Now, as a, as a Trinitarian Christian, I don't believe that to be the case. However, it is on us to be able to reflect carefully on that and to articulate why it is we believe in God, in Jesus, and what that means to us. So I lay this before you as an ongoing lifelong learning process to be able to um, uh, with, with a sense of uh, honor to be able to talk about being a Trinitarian Christian and what that means. Anyway, I'm going to leave that for now, just a reminder about how important that issue is for Jews and Muslims when they, when they talk about God as one, the oneness of God, and then how, how are Christians believing in the one God, but as triune or in the Trinity. Okay. We'll leave that aside for now. And um, the second question that we left with you in the handouts or the overviews that Elizabeth had me post was the reflection question. Jesus is an important person for Muslims. Why do you think that is so? So I want to ask you, based on our discussion from last week and the passages that we read from the Quran, why do you think Jesus is an important person for Muslims? And here I'm going to ask Jamal and Suhad to kind of wait for a minute. Let's see if the other people can answer. <laughs> I think, I think be, <clears throat> because he, he was an example of a good life. Okay. He was a prophet. Mm -hmm. He was reforming the Jewish tradition. <laughs> what else?
Anything else? Okay. Well, it's obvious that the answer is he is an important person, right? And there are many reasons why he's an important person, but first and foremost, because in the Quran, he is a prophet, he is a messenger, he brings a word of God and the spirit of God to people, but specifically to Christians. And so Christians are honored uh, because Jesus brings the gospel to Christians to believe in God, okay? So that's something important to remember as we move forward and in your conversations with Muslims. Um, I saw a t-shirt once uh, that was worn by um, a young Muslim man and it said on it, um, I heart Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. it's an I, and then big heart and it says Jesus, right? So as a young Muslim, he was wearing this I love Jesus shirt and of course, everybody thought he was Christian, but um, he wasn't. He was Muslim, and uh, that was his way of, of honoring the prophet Jesus, okay? All right, so that was last week. Now, this week, we're going to shift gears and move out of the Quran and read some material from the Islamic traditions, from the Islamic traditions. Um, now, what... What are the sources we are going to be looking at today? And I have them listed for you here at the top. There are three sets of or collections of writings from which these stories of Jesus are taken. The first are Hadith collections. Now, let's, let's remember that Muhammad lived at the end of the 6th century and died 632, so the 7th century. And his followers then collected the recitations of the Quran and collected it, wrote it down, and compiled it in about 650, so in the 7th century. So these traditions that we're going to be reading are about 80 to 150 years after the Quran. They come later, right? They come later. They are hadith collections. Does anybody know what a hadith is? We know, of course. What's the of one? course. Yeah. I would hope you know. Yeah. Tell, us, yeah. tell, us, <laughs> tell us what a hadith is. It's what the Prophet Muhammad used to uh, say it to his followers and to the people, like uh, Hikmah. Uh, wisdom. Yeah, kind wisdom of words. kind of wisdom, kind yeah. of uh, how to how to treat people, how to deal with that with the people, how will be your manners, how to behave, how how and, and all these things. So that was uh, those were like written and memorized from some of his followers, and then uh, a lot of people started to go back to this hadith. Hey, Muhammad said so and so and so. So you need to do this. So Muhammad said so. Yeah. It's a basic. Uh, organizing the relationship between people, not the worship between the human and his and, uh, uh, Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. most, most, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, given that the Quran was believed to be the words of God, after Muhammad died, um, no one knew how. To, well, I shouldn't say no one knew, but. Muhammad was seen as the best interpreter of the revelations because he was the closest one to them. He received the revelations. And as the last prophet, his followers would go to him to help them understand what the revelations meant. But after Muhammad died, they wanted to find out what these revelations meant. And so his followers remembered what he said, and then they wrote them down. So they were um, the, the first, let's say, commentary on the Quran um, or about how to be a, a good Muslim. And the Muslims collected these together and put them eventually in collections of books called the Hadith collections. And there's six, um, six different collections in the Sunni Islam and, and two in Shi'i Islam. Now, there's another body of literature that, that came along after this, and that was people who began 
reading the Quran and writing commentaries. They were trying to understand what the Quran meant. And so they used all kinds of methods to figure out what God was saying. Sometimes they focused on the Arabic because they may not have understood the Arabic if they were Persian um, or read Aramaic. Um, sometimes they focused on the Hadith and included Hadith, Muhammad sayings in their commentary. Sometimes they looked at the historical context around which Muhammad was living. They did all kinds of things to, to help them understand what the Quran meant. And so commentaries are very similar to the commentaries we have on the Bible and the books of the Bible. They're the same thing. And the last body of literature is called the stories of the prophets or the Qasas al -Anbiya. Now, you'll remember from last week, I said that the Quran does not really read like the Bible reads. Whereas we have, especially in the Gospels, a narrative of the life of Jesus. The Quran does not really have narratives. It has recitations or uh, speeches um, that are put together in various ways, much like the Psalms or the Proverbs are. But the, when early Muslims were trying to help them understand these recitations or the revelations, they went to uh, that reference, let's say, Abraham or Isaac or David or Solomon, particular people in the Quran that they may not have known the stories of, they went to a number of converts, Jewish converts, Christian converts, and asked them uh, particular things about these stories of the Israelites, or stories of Noah, or stories of Jonah, or David, or Joseph. And these converts could say, yes, we know of this from the Bible. Here is the tradition. And throughout the generations, Muslims began filling in the uh, particular holes that the Quran did not provide all the story. And it began to fill in narratives of the prophets, the lives of the prophets. So these stories of the prophets read much more like the Gospels do, because they're a narrative of each of the prophets' lives. So if you read particular stories of the prophets you, as, a, as a Christian, it will become very familiar to you because it reads like the Bible reads. There's a story of Jonah, or there's a story of Job, or there's a story of David. These are things that Christians would find very familiar, but they might be slightly different. The, the, the story might be just a little bit different than what we have in the Bible. Nevertheless, you would recognize the person and the storyline. But for Muslims, this is not scripture. This is not revelation. This is a commentary or um, a, a, a way to help you understand revelation. So I think that's an important distinction for us as Christians to think about how, how we understand Scripture itself. Okay. okay, let me stop there and see if there are any particular questions, because I find that for Protestants especially, who have been taught over and over again, we only read the Bible. That's our only source. Whereas for Catholics and Orthodox Christians who read all other kinds of literature to help them understand the Bible, this kind of thing can be a little bit disorienting, I think, for Protestant Christians. So let me stop here and see if there are any questions about these particular non-Quranical sources, if I've been clear. I have a question, David. Yes. By reading some of these other references that you mentioned, do you believe it gives us more insight, more clarification, gives us something different to think about when we read the Bible? Well, we can answer that in two ways. And, and I'll let you be the judge at the end of class. How's that? <laughs> so the first thing is, certainly for Muslims over history, reading these particular um, stories of the prophets or hadith collections 
has been for them an important way to help them understand passages in the Quran. There's no question about it. So for Muslims, it's been a very important bodies of literature um, to look at uh, understanding the Quran. I'll let you be the judge whether it's helpful for you in helping us to think about Jesus from the Bible. The last thing I want to say before we begin looking at some of these traditions is that I'm always reminded when I teach these particular kinds of courses for Christians, because there's a particular um, there's a particular charge to me about my role as a scholar of Christianity or Islam. And this is a charge that Jesus gives to me. And I want to read this passage. Jesus was asked, Spirit and Word of God, who is the most seditious of men? Jesus replied, the scholar who is in error. If a scholar errs, a host of people will fall into error because of him. So, I hope I'm not falling into error today because I will be leading a whole room of people astray, and I hope that won't be the case. All right, so let's begin. Um, we're going to look at uh, some descriptions that these traditions have about Jesus, whereas the Bible does not talk about descriptions of Jesus, what he looked like, um, things like that. The Islamic traditions do. So let's look at two of these. Can somebody read the first one uh, Jesus used, used to eat? Uh, eat, welcome back. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Let me get rid of this. Uh, Jesus used to eat the leaves of trees, dress in hair shirts, and sleep wherever night found him. He had no child who might die, no house which might fall into ruin, nor did he save his lunch for his dinner or his dinner for lunch. He used to say, each day brings with it its own sustenance. sustenance. Okay, thank you, Dee. Can somebody read the next one? Vicki. <clears throat> thank you. Jesus was a constant traveler in the land, never abiding in a house or a village. His clothing consisted of a cloak made of coarse hair or camel stub, and two hairless shirts. In his hand, he carried a club. Whenever night fell, his lamp was moonlight, his shade the blackness of night, his bed the earth, his pillow a stone, his food the plants of the fields. At times, he spent whole days and nights without food. In times of distress, he was happy, and in times of ease, he was sad. Okay. So these are just two examples of the many different traditions where Jesus is both described physically and his personality. What kinds of things jump out at you here? What, what is interesting for you here? Carrying the club. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. yeah. What is a club, please? A Heavy stick. stick. A stick. A stick. Heavy, heavy. Stick. Stick. Yeah. yeah. Defend yourself. It, it might, the translation might be more like a walking stick. Yeah. Oh, well, oh well, that's yeah. different. That's good. Yeah, yeah. But of course, if you remember from um, that great scene in the Ten Commandments where Charleston Heston, Charleston Heston, as Moses, fends off the robbers with his shepherd staff, right? So... You can use it both ways. <laughs> uh, David, I never thought of Jesus roughing it like this. It sounds like John the Baptist. That's yes. what I thought of. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I thought of. I thought he went mm -hmm. into homes and was cared for and fed. Yeah. That's interesting. Not a lot of things. <clears throat> and, he, and he traveled with his apostles. He, right. he wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. When we think of at the beginning of Lent, we read the, the story of Jesus going into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. 
-hmm. What do you imagine he looked like after those 40 days and 40 nights? Yeah, he's not pretty. Yeah, stinky. <laughs> so here we have an image of Jesus as the wandering prophet, someone who was, uh, in many ways, sounds like a monastic, a monk, yeah. mm -hmm. a, a monastic who would be by himself for the most part in, in the wilderness and was wandering from place to place, right? Yes. And he does, he does sound a lot like John the Baptist from our perspective. Um, have you ever contrasted John the Baptist and Jesus in our Gospels? Uh, in what way, uh, David, specifically? How well, in the way that um, they are described by the Gospels. Oh, physically? Yeah. Uh, I've thought of John the Baptist as the wild man of Borneo. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One difference was that Jesus attended banquets and weddings and and uh, feasts, yeah. and there's no mention of John the Baptist doing that. And that's true. The word Essenes, I don't think, is used in the gospel, but that's what you know archaeologists have described him as. So that that's a you know quite a contrast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you think of, in my childhood, the way Jesus was uh, depicted in paintings and pictures. Right. <laughs> which, of course, now we know was just ridiculous because of where he was living and his background, his ethnicity. But then again, in those you know, flowing white robes with the light behind, he would never have put Jesus in this role. Yeah. Uh, if John was the last of the prophets, and Jesus fulfilled the prophets, and he's got to be made into a prophet so that there can be a succession of prophets in which he's not the son of God. Say that again. Oh, Say that again. Wow. John the Baptist was the, the last of the greatest of the prophets. And Jesus came to fulfill the prophets, supersede them all. Now he's made to look like a prophet so that he can be part just of a long string of prophets, and Muhammad comes to complete the picture. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, some of the things in this, let's say the second passage there, the descriptions, are there anything in here, is there anything in here that is contrary to what Jesus says or is described as? I think... Yeah. The last sentence, in times of distress, he's happy. Yeah. And in times of ease, he was sad. Well, yeah, that's an interesting passage. What's that? Yeah, I don't know. I, I've always kind of looked at it as, you know, here's this solitary, um, even-keeled person, right, that is not too high, not too low, um, that's always um, in moments of great joy is kind of keeping people right, leveled, and, and in, in the moments of sadness, kind of trying to bring them up. That's how I've always read it. Mm -hmm. We do read in the Gospels where Jesus says to his disciples, take nothing but a... Something. Hold on, Suhad. Sorry? <clears throat> Suhad. Suhad yeah, Suhad. Yeah, in Muslim perspectives, it's uh, when uh, someone is in times of stress, he was in times of distress, uh, uh, people are in a test, so uh, they would be they would feel happy because God had chosen them to test them to see whether they would be patient, obedient, or they would uh, uh, refuse His uh, uh, fate on them. And in times of ease, they would be sad because they said, "Oh, God had left us uh, to enjoy life and not think about Him." Oh. Mm. Be tempted, testing and tempting. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Thank you. That's an interesting insight. Yeah. Um, I was going to say there are things in here that um, we know Jesus says in the Gospels, you know, that his disciples are to take only two shirts with them when they go on the road, or they're only to take a stick with them or a bag. Um, and it's also said that there was no 
that he had no place to lay his head. So we find in the Gospels there are, are similar resonances of Jesus as a wandering prophet or a wandering um, uh, teacher um, prior to his going to Jerusalem before his last days, certainly when he was in the Galilee going from village to village. You'll see remnants of this in the next particular passage. Can somebody read the next one, Sayings of Jesus? Uh, Nelson, please. Jesus said, strive for the sake of God and not for the sake of your bellies. Look at the birds coming and going. They neither reap nor plow, and God provides for them. If you say, our bellies are larger than the bellies of the birds, then look at these cattle, wild or tame, as they come and go, neither weeping nor plowing, and God provides for them too. Beware of the excess of the world, for the excesses of the world are an abomination in God's mm. eyes. Whoa. Wow. All right, so there's a particular reference here to the birds, the birds of the air. Does that bring to mind anything from the Gospels? Sure. The does. Yes. yes. Uh, don't worry about whether you, you know, what you're going to eat because God takes care of the birds. They neither reap nor sow. Right. So this, there's a similarity here to that particular passage where Jesus says, look at these birds. God you know, they're not worried about what's going to come tomorrow. God takes care of them. So therefore, do not worry for tomorrow, for today has enough troubles of itself. In this case, there's a slightly different point that Jesus is making. It's not don't worry about tomorrow, but what? Be content with tomorrow. Prepare. Accepting it. Yes, yeah, Suhad. Work for tomorrow. What's that? Work, keep working to get things, not just lay back and wait for God's uh, to mm -hmm. buy your, what you, your food. Or, yeah. I feel it has something to do with today. Mm -hmm. Then enjoy today and work for today. Don't be concerned about tomorrow. Uh huh. And what is he warning us against in this case? Excess. Excess. Story. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So just like you said, yeah, today is to work for today. And don't worry about storing things up, the excess. And he says it's not it's not only not good for you, but he says God says it's what? An abomination. An abomination. So you can imagine here is this, this um, prophet, this wandering prophet like John the Baptist, who doesn't own very much, who goes from town to town, and he's telling his followers, uh, uh, if you if you store things up, if you gather too much together, um, that'll get you in trouble with God. Uh, one can think about the passage where Jesus says, it's harder for the rich man to go through an eye of a needle than into the kingdom of heaven, right? Camel. So, uh, yeah, camel. Yeah, cam yeah, right. <laughs> uh, camel through an eye of a needle. <laughs> you think Tom Brady reads that? <laughs> I'll let Tom Brady speak, speak for himself. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Let's turn the page here. And if somebody could get ready to read Matthew 6, 26 to 34. Um, could someone read that next passage? Jesus used to say. I will. I will. Diane will. Jesus used to say, O disciples, do not seek the world by destroying yourselves. Seek your salvation by abandoning what is in the world. Naked you came into the world, and naked you shall depart. Do not seek what substance tomorrow may bring, but let each day's substance suffice, and tomorrow will bring its own concerns. Pray God to bring you sustenance day by day. Right. What does okay. K 73 mean? What's K? Yes, uh, thank you for mentioning that. So if you turn over the page back at the on the front of the page at the very bottom, you'll see a little footnote there that says all the citations here are taken from this book. And I have this book here. 
It's called The Muslim Jesus by Tarif Khalidi. And it's a, um, so I've not translated these passages from Persian or Arabic. These are all um, passages that come from the book. So um, I've just referenced where they are in case any of you want to spend your evenings reading, reading these if you can't sleep. Why, why is there a T or a K? Um, well, it should be, well, it's, T. it should be T. They should all be T. Um, yeah. Yeah. Scholar error. There you go. Okay. So somebody, somebody, um, somebody read Matthew 6, 26 to 34. Satan said to Jesus when he placed him in Jerusalem, you claim to raise the dead. If you can truly do so, Wait. ask God to turn this mountain to bread. Jesus no, said, do all people live from bread? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, Matthew 6. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Matthew 6, 26 to 34. Further down, then. No, she's Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you worrying add a single hour to your span of life? Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. <laughs> oh. hey. Yeah, I think uh, all the financial advisors uh, <laughs> And how much they must in these, in these in ten passages. Years, in five years, in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, right. So here we have two passages um, that reference this similar, or at least sound similar to Matthew 6. Yes, yeah, Suhad. Uh, yeah, in Islam also it says like every day when you rise up, uh, you have to be uh, aware of three things. If you are uh, uh, still a believer and you are in a good health and you have your food only for the day, then there is nothing else to worry about. Mm -hmm. okay. wow. It's a good spiritual practice. Yeah. <laughs> so in both cases here, and the one passage from the front page, um, Jesus talks about excess. Wor beware of excess. And then the second one here, he says, pray for sustenance for the day. So they, they're, they resonate with this Matthew reading, but in slightly different ways, there's a focus, slightly different focus in each of these. Now, what I particularly appreciate is Jesus um, saying, naked you came into the world and naked you shall depart. That was something my dad always used to say to me. You know, he, he would always say, you're, you know, you, you come into the world naked, you're going to leave naked. So... Why worry about anything else? And I don't think my dad was a Muslim, but um, I don't know where he got it. So <laughs> anyway, all right, let's go on. Let's look at the next one. If somebody could get ready to read Luke 4, and then someone else can read the uh, Hadith passage here, Satan. Do you want to read Luke 4, hon? No, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. No, this is Somebody, she, you have it? Okay, on the paper. I can read it. No, it's Luke. Satan said to us. No, you're supposed to read what's on the paper, and then you're supposed to read Luke. Okay. Okay, can Ruth read what's on the paper then? Right. Yeah. Well, now she's got you started to read <laughs> Which do you want me to read? Read. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said, if it is a day of fasting, wait, no, 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 the one above, Satan. Satan said to Jesus when he placed him in Jerusalem, you claim to raise the dead. If you can truly do so, ask God to turn this mountain to bread. 
And Jesus said, do all people live from bread? Satan said, if you are what you claim to be, jump from this place, for the angels will receive you. And Jesus said, God ordered me not to put myself to the test, for do I not know whether he will not save me or not? Hmm. All right, somebody read Luke, Luke 4. Carol's going to read that. The temptation of Jesus. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The yeah. devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Okay. <clears throat> so here you have somewhat similar passages of Satan testing Jesus. What jumps out at you here? Yes, Vicki. Well, he, like, like Jesus doesn't have faith that God would save him. Yeah, I think that's curious, isn't it? Yeah. I do not know whether he will sa not save me or not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that he, you got to have the faith that, I don't know, you know, that he would save him. What else? Yeah. Well, turn this mountain to bread, not just a rock. That's a lot of bread. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you can definitely feed the 5,000 with that. <laughs> but it's excessive. Good point. <laughs> excessive. Yes. Excessive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Um, if somebody could read the next hadith, and then someone else read Matthew 6, 1 to 8. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> I mean, the Karen? Here, she's reading it. Oh, okay. Okay, <clears throat> okay and then Karen, can you do the other one? I'm sorry. Oh. Jesus said, if it is a day of fasting for one of you, let him anoint his head and beard and wipe his lips so that people will not know that he is fasting. If he gives with the right hand, let him hide this from his left hand. If he prays, let him pull down the door curtain. For God apportions praise as he apportions livelihood. Did somebody read Matthew? Karen? Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. <clears throat> but when you give alms, do not let, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And, okay, when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Now, that's why I don't like ashes on Ash Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I don't do that. I, can, I mean... Yeah, it is interesting that that is actually the passage that's assigned for Ash Wednesday. 
So what what jumps out at you in these uh, these two passages, the Hadith here and then the Matthew passage? Very humble. Mm -hmm. So again, you can imagine. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, the worship is just between you and God. It's for you and for God. It's not for other people. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, you can imagine this wandering prophet, this ascetic monk, who's going from town to town, and and preaching and um, talking about what's important in life is one's relationship with God. This is the image that we continue to get over and over again with these Islamic traditions. Can I ask David a question? At the very beginning, sure. At the very beginning of the first page, the first sentence talks about. Jesus as a wandering teacher and Sufi master. Did you explain what Sufi master is? Yeah, thank you for raising that question. So Sufism is a tradition or um, a movement within Islam that focuses on mysticism. Mysticism. Um, monastic, um, monastic lifestyles, um, using the body to purify the body for particular spiritual practices. So, so um, at least in the Shiite tradition, which is a segment of Islam, um, uh, many of you have heard about Sunnis and Shiites. Among Shiites, um, Jesus is often seen as a Sufi master, meaning a mystic, someone who, um, much like we think about... Um, um, uh, Hindu teachers, um, what do they call those? The people that um, lots of people follow in Hinduism. What is the, uh, yeah, a guru, thank you. Yeah, it, much like in the idea of a guru, that, um, that he, he uses his body for all, all kinds of spiritual practices to purify himself um, and, and teaches wisdom. This is um, what Sufism um, is um, the, the focus of Sufism, if that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. The disciples said, and somebody, let's, let's um, change it up. Somebody look at Mark 13, 1 to 2. Mark. Mark? Yep. <clears throat> but somebody read the disciples said. <clears throat> I will. I'll do it. Do you want the, the Bible first? Yeah. No, no, no. The passage first. Okay. The disciples said, Christ of God, look at the house of God, how beautiful it is. He replied, Amen, Amen. Truly I say to you, God will not leave one stone of this mosque upon another, but will destroy it utterly because of the sins of its people. God does nothing with gold, silver, or these stones. More dear to God than all these are the pure in heart. Through them, God builds up the earth or else destroys it if these hearts are other than pure. Okay, somebody read Mark. Okay. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. And then do you want the Luke 21? No, I think that's enough. So what, what jumps out at you here? Does, does the, I don't know. <laughs> it's basically the same thing except at the end. There's sort of a wrap up that God uh, builds up the earth or else destroys it as if these hearts are other than pure. In other words, it explains what really is important, not the temple itself, but a pure mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. And what does it say at the end of Mark there? will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. 
Okay. And what happens to the temple in 70 AD? It's destroyed. destroyed. It's destroyed by the Romans, right? So at least in Mark, there's this foreshadowing of the destruction of the temple, um, which for many scholars um, looks at this historically that, that the temple actually does get destroyed. Whereas here in the Hadith, it is um, talking about the individuals and individuals' particular um, belief or, or spirituality. Anything else? All right, let's look at the last one. And if somebody could get ready, Matthew 7, 24 to 28. And I'll read this one here. Jesus said, O disciples, which of you can build a house upon the waves of the sea? They said, Spirit of God, who can do that? He said, Beware the world and do not make it your abode. Oh. Mm. Oh, well, that's wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can somebody read Matthew 7? I have it. <clears throat> Everyone then who hears these words of mine and sets on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the, fl <clears throat> the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who had built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the house, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Then, and then it fell, and the great, and <coughs> great was its fall. Do I keep going or not? Yeah. Uh, then, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as their scribes. Okay. What do you find here in comparing the, or contrasting these passages? It's building on water rather than the sand. That's kind of an yeah. interesting. Yeah, interesting that's, a, that's a more descriptive metaphor. The, the, mm -hmm. the house on the waves of the sea. Well, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. No houseboats. <laughs> <laughs> No houseboats. Beware the world and do not make it your abode. I don't, uh, I don't know. That's the, like the, the song that we sang this morning, All I Know Is I'm Not Home Yet. This yeah. is not where I belong. Mm. Yeah, there's definitely, throughout these sayings, there's definitely a focus on the fact that um, the world is a place of temptation. And uh, that one needs to be aware of that temptation um, in one's life. And it, it relates to the last saying that I have here um, that we don't find in the Gospels anywhere, the canonical Gospels, where Christ said, the world is a bridge, cross this bridge, but do not build upon it, um, which is um, a spiritualizing of uh, the, the purpose of life. I guess. I, I want to raise to you a couple of important um, titles and words that we looked at last week. And that is, you'll notice in both of the, the last of these two sayings by Jesus, that he's called the Spirit of God, and he's called Christ, yeah, that which was... is Messiah. Yeah, wow. So you remember from last week that Jesus in the Quran is called the Messiah, Christ, al Messiah, and Christ is the Greek word for the Hebrew Messiah, and he's also called Spirit of God, O Spirit of God. So again, those are terms that we know, they are in Islamic literature, but they mean slightly different things for Muslims. They don't imply Jesus as divine, or they don't imply that Jesus is God. Hmm. So, so as we look at this literature as a whole, what are some of the things that, that stand out to you as we close out the class? Or what are the continuing questions you might have about these? 
Uh, they, yes. Uh, I like the emphasis on fasting. I always have the impression Muslims have a greater emphasis and the practice of fasting that, than we do. And, and I think that's very sound. Uh, it, fasting has many meanings. Mm -hmm. to be taken very seriously, to put it that way. Yeah, thank you for raising that. Um, Jesus in the Islamic literature is an ascetic who is very much involved in spiritual practices of fasting, prayer, almsgiving, if you remember from last week. These are the things that often come up in these portrayals of who Jesus is. He's remembered for these particular um, spiritual practices. Yes, what else? Mm -hmm. uh, my, my question is, did the Jews get their information from one source and the Muslims get their information from another source or from both, both get them from both? Yeah, that's an, that is an excellent question. And as a historian, that's my job to kind of figure that out. And I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> so, but, what we, but what we can say very clearly is that in both Christian, Jewish, and Islamic traditions, there is a whole body of literature that evolves from oral tradition. People telling stories and passing stories down year after year, generation after generation, until they're ultimately written down. And then once they're written down, we have a record of them. So we do know that both Jews and Muslims shared oral tradition for centuries before they were written down. Mm -hmm. Yes, Suhad. Uh, David, uh, last week you uh, asked, what is the Messiah? And mm -hmm. I don't remember what did you say about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the Islamic tradition, there is no definitive answer. Interestingly, in, in the commentaries on the Quran, the second list of body of literature that Muslims have, the commentators are always asking the question, what does God mean when he calls Jesus al Messiah, the Messiah? And there's a big debate about it. No one has been able to actually define it. But some people think that it has, some Muslim scholar, scholars think that it has a connection to the fact that Jesus will come back again at the end of time, at the judgment day, to bring about the kingdom of God in this world. And there he will be the Messiah. That's as good as it gets. Yeah. We don't know. Thank you, but I looked into it, and I was uh, like digging into the Arabic language. So I found out that it said that Messiah or Messiah came from the original word, which is Siyaha, which means tourism or tourist. So he was now, this brought my attention to the wandering the prophet. So mm -hmm. uh, Messiah means the wandering because he oh, interesting. and tour around the earth. He didn't stay in one place. Oh. So yeah, he was wandering all the time. So the Messiah means the wandering. Uh, interesting. And where did you find that? Where were you looking for that? Uh, I was looking from one subject to another and I digged into the Arabic language. I went to the original word of Messiah. It means the, per the Messiah is the adjective from the noun of Siyaha, which Siyaha means... Right, Siyaha means to travel, All right. Yeah, travel. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I've not heard that before. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, I, uh, other commentators have argued that it, it, it's actually borrowing from the Aramaic or the, or the Hebrew for anointed one or the king. Mm -hmm. um, but that's very different than from what... I, I like your... your uh, reading better. That makes more sense to me. <laughs> okay, so next week, um, we're going to look at the same body of literature, but instead of focusing on Jesus' sayings, we're going to look at the stories of Jesus' miracles, where he, he provides a number of miracles, and they're longer narratives that come from the Kasas Alambia, or the stories of the prophet. Okay? Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good Sunday. Yeah, thank you. See you next week.
Yeah, say hi to Carl and the kids. Thank you, David. We won't. I won't be here next week because it's Ramadan, so I would be fast. Yes. It would be so hard to uh, wake up early. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All the best. You sleep as long as you can, right? Yeah, I, I spend the night. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much.